So what do I expect you to have when you do your analysis? Some of this we've already talked about. But as we move in to this last sort of run at this, uh, um, for this course, and we get to the final part of the project, uh, which will be more developing some financials for a particular project, but as we move into the final, whenever you're thinking about doing the financial element of the financial aspect of the assessment, of the uh, strategic assessment, you look at the sales growth, you look at market trends, right? We talked about these already. I want you to look at gross margin, make some assessment as to whether or not any change in gross margin, whether or not it might be because of improved or weakening pricing, or improved or or pressure on your cost structure from suppliers. In other words, are we are we visioning, are we seeing a change in the strategic forces associated with the um, rivalry in the marketplace or substitute products or new entries? Is that dynamic causing the change in the gross margin, if there is one? Or is it a supplier, strength of the suppliers? that might be causing, or, or the customers, that the customers are on the pricing side. But is it the strength of the suppliers that might be causing it on the, um, uh, on the, the, the cost side? So it's not really enough to say its revenue is growing. You want to sort of break it down and figure out how it links in to what the strategic position of the firm is. Then when you get into the operating analysis, you're essentially looking at does is GNA getting out of hand? General administrative expenses should for the firms we study, which are pretty much pretty standard firms, it should be pretty flat. If if general administrative expenses are increasing from say six percent to seven percent to eight percent, that generally means something is not right. Right now, it can be explained if your top line revenue is dropping, and they're not fast enough at adjusting their underlying expense structure. But again, that signals something that you need to be or they need to be looking at. Um, then you look into working capital, look at inventory to see if inventory is going up or whether inventories are being depleted. There might be some issues there. Accounts receivable and accounts payable. Accounts payable may mean they're not paying their bills or it may mean that the, the suppliers are putting pressure on them to pay sooner, which might mean that suppliers see a sign of weakness. You might want to look into that as well. And accounts receivable can be risky if that starts to increase, your turns start to become poor, less, less uh, positive. Um, that may signal that you're, you're essentially stuffing your channels or your, the organization is selling things by giving credit, by essentially giving it away. Uh, side comment here, there was a uh, one of the, the, the interesting elements when I was with AT&T and AT&T was splitting up into, its, uh, uh, into the, the, the part of the business that made telecommunication equipment and the part of the business that sold long distance and cellular system, in other words, the service versus the equipment. The equipment business was eventually spun off as Lucent and became part of Alcatel. But one of the, log one of the reasons behind that split up, the financial reason behind why the, the old AT&T, one of the largest firms in the world, split up into these two units, was that suppliers that loosened, or the, the AT&T equipment business, was a supplier to competitors in the industry. And the competitors was, were actually requiring AT&T as a vendor selling network equipment to offer them long-term credit for selling their products, supplier credit. And so the competitors, like at the time, it was um, MCI, which is now owned by Verizon, and Sprint was there. They were actually using AT&T's balance sheet, the big company, to fund their own expansion and pulling credit. So they were essentially taking the financial strength of AT&T and moving it to them through this equipment carrier. It's a very sophisticated, when you think about it, financial move by these, these um, network players who were weakening AT&T's financial position by how they insisted upon dealing with the, um, the equipment manufacturer. And that stress on the company 
uh, is what ultimately, one of the things that ultimately led to the decision to split the two firms up. If you think about that, that's a, quite a strategic analysis that was driven to a large degree by this financial stress in the working capital side in the sense of uh, the accounts receivable being extended and inventories and how that was handled and how that was weakening AT&T's position. There's a lot of other factors, but um, it is a, an interesting uh, an interesting point that shows a strategic move like splitting up a company into two large other firms uh, was driven largely by this balance sheet activity that was going on.